G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here watching one of the world's best players take on somebody just outside the top 10. I'm excited, you're excited. Let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen. Spawning in the east of the map in the color red, playing as the Aobids. We've got Balu. And on the west side of the map, in the color yellow, it's Lucifron. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dry Arabia. I don't think I mentioned Lucifron Civilization. Uh, for those who were uh, hard of vision, he's playing the Delhi Sultan. Anyway, let's get to it. We have got ourselves an absolute, I was going to say an absolute shit fight of a game. Uh, I think I can say that. Uh, of course, the Delhi Sultanate is always going to be exciting games. Uh, just simply because when you take these early sacred sites, you are telling your opponent, hey, buddy, I'm going to win the game unless you do something about it. And, well, typically that's not good for the other guy. Uh, so he normally needs to do something. So anyway, let's uh, let's get to it. If uh, if you're enjoying this Age of Empires 4 content, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, really helps out the traction of the video. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about this matchup. The Aobids, of course, the Abbasid Dynasty variant civilization. Civilization? No, there's no T at the end of that word. It's just civilization. Um, pretty strong civilization at the moment. Uh, did receive a couple of nerfs recently, uh, most notably to their age ups. So I'm curious to see exactly what direction Balu goes. Uh, we did see in a recent game somebody going for Master Smiths. I don't think Balu is going to be taking that here. I'd be curious to see exactly which age up he goes for. And have a look at this. Both players starting out with some berries. So very, very nice right there. Uh, but uh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, but uh, I think that's what uh, gives you the, the opportunity to take this route that Balu has taken. He's been very aggressive around the back of Lucifron's base, and if we check in with Lucifron, you can see that he's not been nearly as aggressive, and in fact, now also going to be going through the same area that Balu's gone. If we look from Balu's perspective on the map, you can see he's gone and taken all of this back channel, uh, and now Lucifron is going to be going into that same area eventually, so it's, uh, it's one of those things where it doesn't feel good to be a gangster this time. Anyway, let's check in with Balu and see how he's doing. Uh, age up. He could have looked for that culture wing advancement. Not going to be it. I reckon eco wing. Do you go eco wing into the growth? Could do. I could see military wing into reinforcement. Yeah, eco wing into growth, I think, is definitely the play. It feels like the best age up at the moment, but see, three villages and 50 orchards is, is pretty nice. As long as you actually leave these orchards and, and don't take them. And I think that's what he's focusing on doing here. So you can actually get maximum efficiency from that. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. I'd be happy with that. Three villages is quite a lot as well when you think about it, right? And you're getting them pretty early on in the game. So yeah, I, I like that age up. I, I think that's pretty good. What, what could possibly be better than that? I, I guess it depends on what your plan is, right? If you're going for fast castle, uh, it kind of makes sense going into military wing because you get one desert raider. I think we saw a bee do that. Oof. Jeez, 13 sheep, 14, 15 sheep. Not to mention the 16, 17, 18 sheep that are underneath the town center. Because remember, you start with three. This is a man who is going to be considered an honorary New Zealander. No, 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 no. Don't do Lucifron like that. Don't you dare. Good man, good man. Let, let Lucifron get a sheep, all right? Let him get... Oh, God, he got another one. Dude, he's got all the sheep. There's another sheep. Oh, my Lord. He's like... Wow. Wow. Lucifron. <laughs> the man's got three sheep. Somebody help him. Yes, Lu Lucifer, at, at this stage, at this point in the game, I'm raging at the enemy. I'm like, did you go double scout? Are you map hacking? Like, <laughs> it's this early on. I'm less than four minutes through and I'm confident this game is a doozy. Lucifron, this is going to be a big ask for you to come back from this. There, there is a massive difference between these two. I just want you guys to respect that, okay? 17 sheep. Each one of these 250 food. You're talking about 4,250 food. Compared to your opponent who got three sheep. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's right. This this little guy. Watch out. Watch out for this guy. He, you got to keep your eye on this one right here, guys. This guy. He'll make it He'll make it through to the Imperial Age. Oof, that's a bit of a long distance. Uh, anyway, Balu makes a mistake. Rare mistake coming out there. And forgetting. Wait. Wait. Did he... Is he just going for arrows? Oh, he's just going for arrow slits. It's not an it's not a mistake. Is he going fast castle? That's kind of weird, but it's kind of wild. I like it. I like it. The fact that he did that just for the arrow. Did he do two double? Okay. Wait, is so he's going fast castle against Delhi Sultanate. I don't know about this one, Davy. All right, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so let's just draw, go back to the sheep. Okay. Uh, so he got what was it? Seventeen sheep in total. 
uh, compared to his opponent. So yeah, 17 is 4,250 food. His opponent got three sheep, which is 750. So the difference is 3,500 food. Just to give you an idea on how much food that actually is. In one group of hunt out here, 2,350 food. So two groups we're talking about 4,700. It's basically like you've got one and a half deer packs under your town center. That's the difference. Can you imagine that difference? No, the, these berry patches are uh, pretty similar in size. It's like getting a free berry patch under the TC. He's going to have an absolute field day. I tell you what, that feels so bad for Lucifer. Anyway, Lucifer's already got the Ghazi Raider out. We'll ride on board with him. He's about to find out the hard way. Oh, never mind. He's not going to find out at all about those outposts. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he probably knows already. Let's check in with him and see how he's doing. So it's going to be early Tower of Victory into the Blacksmith, following it up with Sanctity. No real surprise there. He's got the two Scholars out at the moment, so not going to be looking for that triple Scholar timing that we do sometimes see. I think that's normally the double Mosque opening that will go for that. Um, whereas we don't obviously see that here, and he's going to spot all the sheep, and he's going to... Oh, 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 I wanted to be New Zealander today. Come on, man. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. You really do. All right, looks like we've got ourselves there's some scholars on the move here. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second right now. He's Look at that. He switched it just to get an extra couple of seconds off that sanctity. And it makes all the difference. Like, realistically, you're talking about 40 seconds here. He's looking at a seven-minute sanctity timing, which is absolutely amazing. That's exactly when you want to be doing it. The only difference is he's not going to be hitting all three at the same time. It's going to... Ooh, already got an age up. It's not going to be all three sacred sites dinging at the same time. It's only going to be two sacred sites dinging at the same time time so he's gonna split it off it looks like one to the south one to the north leaves that sacred site in the middle at the moment uh and uh we'll come back we'll loop around we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that one in the middle soon don't worry guys uh but age up's now coming through for balu it's gonna be that fast age up together with the reduced cost so culture wing advancement not looking for any bonuses from me remember you can pick up lots of nice little bonuses if you go to castle age like trade wing advisors uh it can be pretty good or culture wing logistics can be pretty good you get three dervish uh, and it means that you can just go snipe away those uh those those relics uh, but here unfortunately i mean it, it's it's kind of wild that it's only 24 seconds difference but it's not really because it's the it's 24 seconds shorter on the age up but it's also a cheaper age up so you have to calculate how long would it take uh, how long would it take him to actually collect those 400 resources as well so when you think about it from that perspective it's actually closer to like probably a minute's worth of of speed on that age up so we're talking about you know a 745 age up roughly uh and compare that to what would have been a nine minute age up uh, had he not gone down that route so a pretty big difference there age up about to come through what are we looking at about 750 yeah a little bit after the 750 mark 755 somewhere around that uh, but first and second sacred sites are now captured lucifron heading back to the base with one into the into the barracks knows what he's up against knows that there is the potential threat of camel lancers and of course, we check in with Balu and see how he's doing as, of course, you and I predicted, the Camel Lancer is now in queue. Nice little position here from Lucifer at the front. No damage done at the moment. And uh, Balu's done a pretty decent job of just keeping his opponent back. The double emplacement on this outpost is, uh, well, look, I'm not going to give him a chef's kiss, but definitely made me scratch the head a little bit the, the, when we saw him go in for that long distance mine. And then he did it, you know, he'd done it twice in a row at that point. That was a bit. That was a bit weird. A bit weird. But uh, hey, we'll let, we'll let the man cook. Let's see what he's he's got. Camel Lancer's out. He's looking for harm. He's looking to try and take the night by storm. Now, keep in mind, they, these units do counter each other, right? You've got the uh, the Ghazi Raider, which does a little bit of extra damage to heavy, and of course the Camel Lancer, which doesn't get a bonus to heavy, but does obviously have that Camel Unease, which reduces the amount of damage you're doing to your. Well, cavalry is it reduces the amount of damage that the enemy cavalry is doing to you anyway sacred site now taken nine minutes set your timers well you don't have to i'll set one for you nine minutes and 40 i'm not i'm not gonna ask uh, our friends to do it you, you know the one that i'm i'm thinking about the one that when you're cooking and you call out to her and you're like hey word set a timer for 12 minutes why would you do it for 12 minutes it's a 10 minute timer on the sacred site it's true that's a good point I'll consider that. All right, double camel down on the south side. Looks like Balu is looking to neutralize the sacred site very early on. Ayubid scout also holding it down. Ghazi Raider. It's moving units down towards the south side. One of the interesting things to note for Lucifron is he didn't get any walls in. You would have thought he would have walled, right? Like, Lucifron is the kind of guy that would have walled. But is he... Does he need walls? Drongo, does he need walls? He doesn't need walls, Drongo. He's strong enough. He knows that if I camp my units in the middle, 
I'll be able to make it down in time. And speaking of making it down in time, have a look at this. Balu having to make a couple of runs as he's, ta he's lost two villagers here. I don't know where the first one went. Might have gone down on the berry bushes. Third one going to go down. Look at that pathing. Path Not the best pathing, that is for sure. Sacred Sight in the south is fine. Camel Lancers over towards that west side. Also looking to get in on the action. Two cancers. Two cancers. Jeez. Two camels up towards that north side. Looking to try and make themselves felt as well. Still not neutralizing though. Look at that. Look at the Ghazi Raider, how well it's done here. Camel on ease coming through. Nice little charge block. Not, not going to matter. And there they are, the Dervish now on the scene as well. Remember that you could, you can technically get free Dervish, but is it worth it? It's probably not worth it waiting that extra bit of time. Camel's getting chased away. Look at the control from Lucifron. He is everywhere, but at the same time, he is nowhere. And that's what's impressive about Lucifron because he'll, he'll kiss you. And then he was never there at the same time. I don't know where I got kiss from. <laughs> I just picture Lucifer in a back alley like, kiss, take it. I'm Spanish. Is it the Sp No, it's the Italians that kiss. Who, who, who do I know that's Italian? Vodka. It's vodka that kisses. Vodka. And you know, that he'd just be like, spaghetti. Sorry, vodka. I <laughs> oh, Lord. Was it was it Shane Gillis who, who said, and I know I reference him like every third cast. Was it Shane Gillis who said that, the Italians are the last people that we can be racist to and it's just going to be like another two or three years away and, you know, people will be, be saying spaghetti and they'll be like, you know, you'll be, you'll be getting called out for saying spaghetti with an Italian accent very, very soon, I'm sure. Uh, but <laughs> he's, he's a funny chap, that guy. I like that guy. Anyway, numbers are starting to build for Balu. Have a look at this. Whole bunch of camel lancers out now. We're going to have to deal with both cavalry and the spears. All three sacred sites still held for Lucifron at this stage of the game. About to hit that castle age timing. Compound of the defender. Will you be going down? Where will you be going down? I suspect somewhere around here. Jeez. I, I didn't pre-watch this game, guys. I'll, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but, uh, wow. I'll tell you what. When it, when it comes... Hey, guys. Look at, look at that. Just absolute... Just perfect. <laughs> I want to talk myself up about like the silliest things like, yeah, guess who predicted the location of the landmark, guys? Yeah, this guy. That's that's the reason why I'm Conqueror 3, all right? Because I know where to put my landmarks. Not really. It's, it's not really. It's because I ab abuse busted things like Ottoman Fast Imperial and <laughs> Juicy Legacy. Jukunu spam. Oh, gosh. Anyway, Balu, he, he's, not, he's not looking to do any of that. Balu's always been a bit of pretty top-notch guy. I like that. You know, some people... I'm not going to name names, but some people always play the most overpowered civilization and always do the most overpowered strategy, which I would also call, you know, good investing, right? Like, that, that's a smart move. But speaking of smart moves, have a look at this. Archer's moving towards the center, able to pick off a fair few spears. He's getting overwhelmed, though. He's going to be careful. That no, no, don't put them together. Don't put them together. Oh, they've all gone to the back. Look at the terror. That was... Okay, that was terrible micro from Balu. What he wanted to do was leave the camels on the front there just to tank up so the archers were able to pick off the spears and unfortunately wasn't able to do that. Put them all together in a group and right click forward, which immediately sent the archers to the back to their death because the Ghazi raiders were there to eat them alive. And now, unfortunately, he's down to a handful of, of archers. And that's really what you need at the moment because the spear are the big threat here. All right, well, we'll see how he goes with the next engagement. He'll be looking this game undoubtedly to secure one of these sacred sites, hopefully, uh, so that his opponent doesn't have a sacred victory in six minutes. Jeez, Louise. Tell you what, that is... Uh, it, it comes up quickly on it, on you, doesn't it? It really does. It's like... It, it's, it's a bit wild. I tell you what, though. One of the things I really liked from Lucifer and, and Vortex, because I know they both did it, was that three scholar build. I don't know exactly... Uh, in what circumstances you'd go for the three scholar build over the two scholar build. But one of the things I love about it is it just takes the sacred sites at seven minutes 30. All three sacred sites are taken. And like, you, you look at the difference, right? Like all, all sacred sites taken at, at 17 or at 730 means that you've got a sacred victory that's two minutes faster than what this one is. Because you've got to walk out here and then you've got to walk down to the middle. But now a single unit stands upon the sacred site. Pausing that timer. Five minutes and 26 seconds. We'll enter over towards that uh, income. So you can see exactly where these two players are sitting. And Lucifron, keep in mind, that age up has come through, but it's going to take some time before the veterancy techs come in. You can see he's got another 13 seconds before those spearmen get upgraded. Still got a while before the Ghazi Raiders come through another minute and 40 seconds, and it looks like he will lose this sacred site in the center. So not going to be able to hold it today. Didn't go for any walls. Perhaps just knew his limits and knew the style that he was looking to play here. Wasn't going to be around that. Now, one of the things to note that we do see coming through, village fortresses. 
So keep your eye out on village fortresses. We'll have to, to check in and see. Oh, gosh, he's got a lot of ills on, on stone. Have a look at this. 450 stone in the bank, 450 stone a minute. That's a man who wants stone. He has only just started collecting. He is, uh, yeah, he is, uh, he's a bit of a... I don't, I don't want to say what I think he is, just because if I do, YouTube's going to be like, you said a bad word. You can't say that. That word is about... I, see, I don't even know if I want to say the word drug, just because I'm fearful that YouTube's going to be like, you said drug. That's not very nice. Demonetized. It's like, excuse me, YouTube. I'm trying to, I'm working here. I'm working here. Sorry, that's my Aussie accent where I'm trying to say I'm walking here. Uh, but uh, have a look at this. We got ourselves a little bit of a raid coming through Lucifron. Caught with his pants down. 14 villagers in the back. Only the outpost to hold them all. They're going to make a run for it. But you guys know the outcome here. It is going to be dead villagers all around as the Lancers get a little bit confused. And not only confusion over on the west side. We've also got action in the middle of the map. Ghazi Raiders together with Lancers now coming out here. And look at the crossbow numbers. They are starting to build. Keep in mind, they've got a pretty decent range here as well. Not enough to one-shot the Camel Lancers, though. It will make the difference. Desert Raider also not going to be one-shot. Wait, was that De Desert Raider or Camel? I don't know what that second one was. But it's an absolute blood fest. Blood fest, blood... Bloodbath. Let's go with Bloodbath, Drongo. As Lucifron gets rinsed. Have a look at that. You don't know until the very end because there's so many dead bodies on the ground. But uh, have a look behind the scenes. It looks like one of those... Lancers did, or those Camel Lancers did get cleaned up, but he's bought himself enough space to get the keep up. Is this the first one of the game? I think it might be. He only just managed to gather up that stone we did see, but the unit numbers are looking good. And he's moving into Spear Crossbow, which is definitely the right call here. Spear Crossbow, maybe mix a mango or two. You're going to be having yourself a great time. But remember, you are against the Ayubids. And one of the things with this civilization is if they see a mangonel very quickly, all of a sudden, there's 15 sprinkles on the field and you're like well how could you afford that he says well I, i've been saving i've been saving for a rainy day and there was rain outside today so here we are anyway speaking of rain i don't know about you guys but um i, li I live down in melbourne in australia and we just had some storms that that was probably the most violent storm i've ever been through uh had a tree out out the front of my house get completely i mean it didn't get ripped out because it's still it's a, it's a relatively small tree it's about five meters tall um I say relatively small because it's, it's, it should be growing to like 15 plus. Um, it just got snapped like at the base. About six inches from the base, completely snapped. We're going to have to get that removed. It sucks, but you know, it, ha it happens. It happens. And then uh, what, what else What else happened in the storm? Oh, you want to know what else happened? My, my, I, got, I got these uh, like a deck. Uh, you know you know what the deck is, right? Like out the back, like the veranda or the, the balcony. No, it's not a balcony. That's a different thing. Uh, the porch the, in the back. We've got like this uh, table and chairs that are out there and they all got swept off the deck because we don't have a fence on our deck. It's just like a, it's, a, it's an open deck. And uh, yeah, they all got swept off and uh, my, my table broke. But guess what? Drongo, he's, he's, a, he's a fix it, man. You should have seen my wife. She was very happy. Man, we, we didn't have to spend a whole bunch more money on a new set of uh, chairs and, and a new table because I fixed it. What a, what a good guy. She, she doesn't know. I took one screw from somewhere and put it in somewhere else. I'm like, yeah, look, honey, it's fixed. Yeah, it's, it's not going to hold. <laughs> all right, all right. Hopefully she's not watching, all right? Let's let's just hope hope that uh, wifey Drongo is not watching. Let's just put it that way. Look at this. We got ourselves action all over the place. Camel Lancers on the south side. Lancers, the real ones, on the north side. I mean, not not to say that your Lancers aren't real over here, Baloo, but they're, they're, they're on camels and... You know, camels are funny. Horses, not so much. I mean, horses are pretty funny, actually. Uh, can we just talk about this keep location? What What is the go with this keep? Can we... I, I, I want to ask this question. What What is this keep achieving? I mean, he... Oh, you know what it is? It's just the food. Oh, this is actually a big brain food. A big brain food. This is a big brain play. Let's talk about this. He puts a keep over here on the east side. Uses the villagers to just start taking the hunt. And you might not think that's a big deal, but what that does is it just delays his farm transition. It basically says, I don't need to transition to farms. You're going to have to transition to farms very, very soon. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you're transitioning to farms in the next minute or two. Whereas Lucifron is like, well, I'm going to take your deer. I'm going to take your double deer. I've got, I've taken my own deer. I've taken my own berries. He's, he's, a lot of his resources right now are going to be coming in, in the form of, of this keep. And I love the way that he's just quite literally outside his opponent's base. But he doesn't know. Balu doesn't know. He's got no idea. He thinks he's got this food back here safe. To be honest, you probably could have thrown a wall up down here and completely walled out your opponent. But it's not going to be the case. This is so cheeky. 
Is it not? Am, am, I, am I talking this up too much? I feel like this is a big deal because we've talked about food swings before. You know, the, uh, the whole amount of food. We, what was it? 3,500 difference between these guys when it came to the sheep. And now Lucifron said, yeah, take your sheep and stick it up your, stick it up your, up your rear, mate. But now the real deal is that you've got all of these all of these deer, 4,700, at least I think so, 3, 350 times 14, 4,700, yep, that's, that's, that's right. I don't know, I, I just said like what it was, what the equation was, and then just repeated my initial answer. It, it sounds like I was right. Definitely sounds like I was right. Where's the mango? Where's the mango? Where's the mango? We need a mango. Come on. You sound like a, sound like a housewife in Northern Queensland looking for mangoes. Like, where's the mango? Where's the mango? We need mangoes. Double traps now coming out. For Balu. Little bit of a population advantage for Lucifron. He's got more units on the field at the moment. Slightly. When it comes to villagers. Uh, when, it, when it comes to military, they were literally... Not connected. <laughs> they were identical. I, I, I wish I could say they weren't, but they were. They were. It was like 53 and, and 9 versus uh, 50 and 12. That's, that's what it was. All right. Well, village fortresses are out. Lucifron, technically, he is booming right now. One. Two. Three. Four. I see four. Four town center equivalents right now. I guess you can just call them town centers. Like these keeps town centers. For all intents and purposes, quite literally town centers. Uh, they are they are generating villages at the same rate as a town center. So this is a pretty nice little boom that he's got going on. I think one of the other things to note that Lucifron's doing here is the longer that the game goes, it's actually a decent game for him. Because he's not neglecting... I say not neglecting scholars. He's not neglecting scholars. He's on six scholars, which is a pretty decent amount at this stage of the game. Obviously, it, it's it's not like your 16 scholars by any means, but it's still a decent amount. It's enough to get, get the text through. And if he does go Imperial Age, he'll probably want to stack a couple more scholars onto the list. But there's the double mango, just as we were talking. Springwood's out for both players. We're entering into the cinematic mode. we got to do it. You know it's time. Big mango shot. Comes a little bit short, but look at the micro that comes out. What happened there? I don't know how we went two for two. I guess it's two for two. Everything looks fine. But now you've got one Springwood out on the side of Balu. It's fired off into the spears, unfortunately. Mango comes in, takes a couple shots at the front. Second Mango now rolling through. Remember that a lot of these units back here are the ranged units, which don't do particularly well. The villager repairing. Able to bait out a couple shots. Trebuchet's on the backside, working down that keep. Only a matter of time until it's taken out. He's going to need to pull more villagers to the fore here. If he wants to keep this keep alive. If he, if he wants to... If this keep should survive. I don't know. It's hard, hard not to say keep multiple times. And no, 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 no. Balu! He takes out a Springle from Lucifron. We've already seen him knock out Demu. Is he going to take out Lucifron today as well? That is a big question because, you know, he's just sitting outside that top 10. Oh, villagers pulled just in time. All right, let's see if it works. Springlord's double on the mango. They need one more shot to do it, but he's left them unprotected on the front. Where are the spearmen, Balu? Where are the spearmen? They get both taken out. Now the mangonel riding along the rear. You can see it wants a shot. It wants a shot. It fires. It's big. It goes a little bit wide, though. Second shot. He's lining it up. He's lining it up, but another Springlord's come out. Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Why are you always ruining my day, Springle? That ruined my day. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Springle v. Springle. No villagers here to repair. Looks like Lucifron should be okay. Big shot onto the Springle. Couple of archers hit. Sounds like a great bombard cannon. What was that? Did you guys hear that? That was... That, that sounded... That sounded deep, man. I hope that wasn't here. I hope that, that was in the game, right, guys? Because I don't, I don't know what could have made that noise. I'll be honest. That was a big noise. What was that? Was it just the trebuchet boulders hitting? It could be. Balu now going to look to secure this sacred site as well. He wants to get villagers out here. There it is. Keep thrown down. Slowly but steadily, it'll be coming up. Manganel ready in position. Springwood's now up to double stack of numbers. And once again, these two look to go at it head to head. Keep in mind behind the scenes, both players looking pretty safe and secure. Once again, Mango Shot still yet to get really good value. But remember that it provides decent coverage on these units. Well, not, not many units left though, Drongo. Come on. Mango. Good shot. That's, that's his first real good shot, I think. He's taken out about four or five units in that one. Hit a whole bunch, but villagers. 
beautiful control from those villagers. The, the outpost. That's a big outpost there. The keep does get up. And with that, I would expect a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of patience from both of these players at this stage of the game now. Because it means Lucifron's going to have to go back and make Trebs if he wants to. Um, it means Balu. I mean, he, he's he's working down the keep, but he's probably going to have to add in another trebuchet. And you, neither player can really push the keeps. That is the reality of the keep. They are very stead, strong, sturdy buildings. That's probably the, the, the term for it. S strong and sturdy. Uh, over on this east side, though, a little bit of a deer heist. A little bit of Grand Theft Venison happening. Don't mind if I do. He, he hasn't gone into... I mean, he's technically he has gone into professional scouts, but there is not a scout out here that is professional. There, there's a couple of amateur scouts. I did see that, but no professional scouts. Farm transition now coming through at the 25-minute mark here for Lucifront. On the other side of the map, Balu is doing the same thing. Uh, interesting to note that somehow Balu managed... I guess it was all those sheep, right? It was all those sheep. That was the difference. That's how he kept himself above water, but uh, let's check in with Lucifron and see how he's doing as his villager count now at 102. Not training a lot of villagers, though, and I guess that's just the consequence of the delayed transition of farms. Maybe it's... Maybe he's just not looking to train 100% of villagers all the time, or maybe it's just not in a control group. Could be the case. He's still got villagers coming in at the front. At the moment, he's got a total of how many keeps? I I've counted one, two, three, four, five. Five keeps. This one in the middle, it feels like he's, he's still committing to keeping it alive. Mango, four sprinkles. Not looking to challenge this keep. Holds all three sacred sites. Loose front. He's looking for a sacred victory. But is he actually planning on it? Because you've got the keep on the sacred site. I think what he's doing is the right call. You keep all of the units around the center. And then from there, you can easily move them up, move them down. You've got the keep there to help keep you alive a little bit longer. Now on that north side, Ghazi Raider is going to be breaking through. We're right on board with Balu as the defense begins. Now, where is the gold coming from for Balu? The answer is relics. He's got three relics in the bag to Lucifron's two. And if he if he wanted this gold, he could take this gold. This gold is technically open for him right now. Triple trebuchet. Jeez Louise. All right. He means business of oh, four trebuchets. I'm not the best at counting. I tell you what, that is a lot. One thing I hope that Balu does is just make spears. Like, Balu, please, just make spears. Just, just a... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just a couple more. Go, thank you. Oh my god, he's got six in queue. Thank you, Balu. Thank you. This is what you need on the defense, okay? When you've got this much siege, you need spears. You, you can't just leave yourself open to a horseman or a Ghazi Raider switch, which is exactly what's happening from Lucifer. He's got nine Ghazi Raiders out, three more in queue, and we've sighted Ghazi Raiders in the north. Like, he... he it is not a fantasy that these Ghazi Raiders exist. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what's the error right here? Anybody want to take a guess, a gander? It's because he's putting all of his military on the sacred side at the same time. All it takes is two mangoes to come from this forest, shoot right here, and you've just lost all of these units. You want to decap the sacred site with just a single unit, mangoes? Oh, he, he blew it a little bit early right there. You hate to see it. A little bit of premature mangonel placement right there. I hate to see it. The Springwoods he commanded with the Mangonels to fire at the mass of military. And Balu got a notification that you're under attack. So what does he do? Presses spacebar, cuts straight to that notification and moves those forces back before the Mangos could blow their loads. And you hate to see it. You hate to. But it happened. Men at Arms now upgraded. Looks like he has picked up the... Where is the... I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, force March. Oh, it's, it's coming through. Force March is coming through. You know what else is coming through? Look at the sprinkled shots coming through every which way. Mango shots fall short again. Still only that good one today. And look at the spears on the front line. Decent mass back here. Looks like he's got a good mix of crossbows and archers. Should be able to kite it away. As long as he's able to keep the sprinkles alive. And now the trebs are looking to help out as well. Slowly but steadily, he grinds towards the front of Balu's base. A decent mass of infantry remains for him. Look at the ranged infantry on that top side. You can see how important it is to keep these Springles alive. Now the men at arms. We still yet to see them use that force. March, Mango! A little bit short, a little bit short. Still yet to hit that center of mass. The force march will change the dynamic of this game completely because the, the, the men at arms will just... Oh, you gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. Oh, he's really in the pocket right now. 
when Force March comes through, which it is, essentially what you can do is just march like 10, 12 of, of your best men at arms straight towards the Springles. And it's very difficult to defend that single Springled with a dream right now. Facing off against three Springles, two Mangoes, and a Trebuchet. Unfortunately, it went the way we thought it would. The Springles were victorious. Slowly but steadily. Lucifron grinds down Balu. A 40 villager lead. Three sacred site lead. One relic deficit in favor of Balu. Lucifron currently up about 35 population. Majority of which is going to be those villagers. The power of village fortresses really demonstrating itself today in this game. Why is it so strong? It's strong because you're investing in defense in a forward location that is also capable of training villagers. So it's got that dual purpose, defense and also economy. It's one of those things like the juicy legacy that just kind of break the rock, paper, scissors in the hands of a skilled pilot like Lucifron. You really get to see it working to its full potential. Behind the scenes, a Ghazi Raider comes out. Forward farms. Don't mind if I do. Now the Ghazi Raider numbers are really starting to rise. He's up to 16 on the field at the moment. Balu. He's got 21 spears out, fortunately. We'll sh we should be able to defend here. And look at the number of Springles out. Lucifron is looming with these Springles. One thing that is different between these two is they're focused. Oh, they're mango shot. It's another one. It's a beautiful hit right there. I think that was a double. He's taken out absolutely amazing amounts of units right there. Second shot now going to be coming off towards... It's gone a little bit wide. Sorry, my wife just came in. She said something to me. I just looked at her like, yeah, of course. It, 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 could, it could have been something like, hey, honey, I'm just spending $26,000 on the credit card again. And I'd just be like, yeah, of course. No worries. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. He's ripped apart by the Mangadels. <laughs> Death by a Manganel. You've seen it here first, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can watch him live. Lucifron over on Twitch. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Jeez Louise. Whew. Not a good day to be a crossbow.